vigilance, the action or state of keeping careful watch, standing guard, defending the bulwark between the righteous and the godless. A couple of days ago, I read a column in the Idaho State Journal. It was written by Debbie Bryce, uh, one of their uh, reporters. And I was very, very unhappy about what I saw. First of all, the, the headline reads, Crapo working to keep funding for domestic sexual violence programs coming to Idaho. Crapo working to keep funding for domestic sexual violence programs coming to Idaho. Now, in this column, Bryce wrote about all the wonderful things Crapo's doing and how all this money is coming to take care of the people of Idaho. But there's a, there's a pretty big problem. When you see the whole uh, story, I think you'll see the problem as well. There was a bill originally written by then-Senator uh, Stupid Biden, and, and he wrote this bill. It was Violence Against Women Act, and it provided federal dollars for... Uh, women who were victims of violent crimes. But it also got involved in policing and judicial efforts inside the states. Now, the United States Constitution specifically prohibits the federal government from being involved in f policing activities of any sort inside the states. And so, anyway, this money keeps coming. Well, the Biden bill expired, and Senator Mike Crapo... Uh, an unconstitutional criminal in Idaho picked it up and rewrote it and got it passed. Now, in addition to providing money for women, it now provides money for all Native American women who also get federal dollars through their tribes. So now they're getting double paid. It provides money for all illegal aliens. It provides money for all gays, lesbians, and transgenders. The only group specifically denied are heterosexual American men. That's it. Only citizens of the United States who happen to be heterosexual men. So anyway, this, uh, this column finally ended by offering a number for the local FSA office. Uh, I, I assume this is an office that uh, administers this federal crime. So I gave him a call. I'll let you listen in. Freedom is not free, but I can help. I offer a set of fundraisers that include advanced firearms training, defensive law seminars, constitution workshops with a focus on the local solution. Now why the local solution? It's simple government of, for, and by the people must always be close to the people. Hey, give me a call. 208-317-9843. Let's talk freedom. Hey, Services Alliance. Hi. Uh, I'm calling because I just read the article in the Idaho State Journal. Uh, the headline was, Crapo working to keep funding coming for domestic sexual violence programs in Idaho. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, are you in the Pocatello area or where are you located? We are. We're in Pocatello. Okay. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a program that brings federal money in and provides services for people who have been victims of violence. Is that correct? Um, yeah. Yeah. We provide the services. Okay. All right. So here's, here's my question for you. Okay. Uh, can you point out the constitutional article that allows the federal government to take money out of the pockets of every taxpayer to fund programs like this? So you know what? That's probably a better question for my director to answer. So can I put you on hold and let her know that you're on the phone? Sure can. Okay. One moment. Thank you. Now, while she's coming on the phone, you know, it's, it's important to point out that Article 1, Section 8 lists all of the powers granted to Congress. And Senator Mike Crapo is an unconstitutional criminal. He is a man who takes money that, that Congress is prohibited from taking. 
and he uses it for services and for projects that, well, Congress is prohibited from being involved in. And the, the tragedy, I think, is that the, uh, the people of Idaho don't know. The people of Idaho haven't taken the opportunity to learn the truth and defend liberty because every time we allow the federal government to be involved in something more than those delegated powers, we give them reach and access into our lives. It's going to be interesting because when this supervisor comes on, she cannot answer my question. Now, she's happy to use the federal money. She's happy to take it and do what she does. But they do so knowing that they can't justify it. So, let's see what they have to say. Sarah, can I help you? Yes. Can I ask who I'm speaking with? This is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Uh, Hi. My name's Lance Earl. Hi, Lance. Hi. I, I read the column... Uh, in the Idaho State Journal from a few days ago that was uh -huh. entitled Crapo Working to Keep Funding for Domestic Violence Programs Coming to Idaho. Right. And this is, this is federal dollars that are coming in to provide services for people right. who have been victimized by violence. Now, the, my concern is we have to keep the federal government constitutionally in check, which means we have to keep Senator Mike Crapo constitutionally in check. And so I'm calling today to ask you if you would please tell me where is the constitutional authority for the federal government to take money out of the taxpayers' pockets, and not, even, not only that, but to borrow money against their futures to fund this project. Is there constitutional authority? So, um... What might be helpful is that actually the uh, VOCA dollars, which are victims of crime dollars, are not tax dollars. They are actually from um, fees of after someone, uh, after someone commits a crime, when they are ordered to pay um, fees, then that helps pay for those services. So it's actually not taxpayer dollars. That is not true because I've been researching and watching this bill since it was written somewhat three or four years ago. It, it is absolutely not true. It is, it is uh, the sales pitch that Crapo gives. I have stood before him uh, at two different town halls, offered him my constitution, and asked him to show me authority. But here's the other thing. What gives the federal government the right to be involved in this in the states because these bills also provide money for policing and judicial efforts. Now, the Constitution specifically prohibits the federal government from being involved in policing activities at all inside the states. So again, I'm asking you not to give me your sales pitch. I would like you to show me the constitutional authority if you can. So I would suggest that you give Senator Crapo's office a call and I can give you their number. Ha, um, Senator Crapo's office doesn't return my calls because I have pinned him down and made him look the fool into town halls. I am asking you. You are the person who takes the money, who distributes the money, who facilitates the program uh, uh, in our area. And I am asking you. Can you do this without being a constitutional criminal? Because I believe that you are, in fact, a constitutional criminal. So I would like you, again, to show me the constitutional authority for the things you do. Okay. And all I can tell you is that my understanding is that this does have not have anything to do with tax dollars. And I just so told you I, that tax you know, dollars are not the whole thing. The government is specifically prohibited from being involved in these activities. This is... Uh, this is the duty of local government, the whole idea to keep government close to the people so that the people can control what government does. It's not just tax dollars. Show me the authority. I don't want to hear your sales pitch. Is there authority? Okay, I understand that. Can you show me the authority? I also understand that you're really frustrated. Can you show me the authority? I'm just asking you a simple question. You are doing something every day with my dollars. I'm asking you to justify it constitutionally. Well, my understanding is that they are not tax dollars, so they're not individual dollars. Okay. You are doing something every day 
that involves federal activities inside of the state with regard to policing and judicial efforts. Show me the authority to do that. Sir, there's really, I can't address your question. I, I know you can't because you don't. I am not don't. an attorney and I am not um, someone who reviews the Constitution on a daily basis. I can give you Senator Crapo's number. His office is going to be able to answer your questions much better than I am. His office can't answer my questions and nor can you. And that was the point of this call. And, and the other point is you are a citizen of these, the United States, correct? I am then don't you have a duty to understand the Constitution? I mean, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence says that government was established by and with the consent of the people, and yet you give blank consent because you haven't taken the time to do your own duties as a citizen. Am I right? That sounds like you have a strong opinion of what I do. Well, you, no, you just gave me your opinion. You say you don't study the Constitution. But yet, our own founding documents say that you have an obligation to do exactly that. So, um, I just need to check in with you if you'd like to give me Senator Crape, or if you'd, if you'd <laughs> like me to give you Senator Crape. No, no. Now, you are, you, are, you are a public servant, right? Um, I work for a local nonprofit, yes. Okay. So, you are a public servant then? I believe that every citizen is, you know, working to serve our community. Mm -hmm. But how can you do that if you don't know what our rights and privileges and what the limits of the laws are? <laughs> Apparently we're done. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thanks so much for calling. I appreciate your time, Lance. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. I'm Lance Earl. I'll see you soon.